Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about sweet nothings. And what do I mean by that? I did a previous episode on why sugar is the enemy and how diabetes is becoming epidemic across the world. And with it, other issues follow heart disease and uh, metabolic syndrome and obesity. But today what we're going to be talking about is the role of artificial sweeteners in all of that. So join me and let's figure it out together. And so everything we try to do with a strong scientific evidence, evidence-based approach, which is a little different uh, in that I'm not just shooting from the hip. And the bottom line is I think you'll appreciate that in what we've done. So if you want more on what we're talking about, the actual data from which we've created the talk is in the description book. Wait, sir. What am I doing? Hey, sugar lungs. Have you ever been there before? Making your coffee in the morning and getting hairy away with a little bit of sweetness? All of us have been there. But like we talked about in the previous episode where sugar is the enemy, artificial sweeteners have played a distinct role within that. And the question now is that should we be using them or not? What are the benefits? What are the downsides? And are they safe to proceed? Ever wondered if that zero calorie soda is a wolf in sheep's clothing? With their promise of zero calories and zero guilt, artificial sweeteners have become staple in everyone's diet, whether it's in your sodas, in your food, in your cookies, in other things. And in particular, some people square by them to cut their sugar intake, in particular diabetics and others who actually have to stay uh, off significant amounts of sugar. But there's also some evidence which we'll talk about that they could have detrimental effects. Let's weigh that evidence together along with the positives of these and come up with a solution. So over the last 40, 50 years, a myriad of different artificial sweeteners have come into play. What are they? They basically constitute chemicals which stimulate the uh, sweet part of your tongue and the receptors there, but actually can't get absorbed uh, because they can't be broken down by your normal enzymes. And so they'll have a twist in their carbohydrate coating or whatnot. And as a result of that, they pass through without any appreciable absorption. Uh, the interesting part about it is they've gone through phases. And the one interesting uh, common feature of them is they're usually much more concentrated than a regular teaspoon of sugar in that you can use a very small portion of artificial sweeteners in the portion of that. To give you an example, aspartame is about 200 times uh, sweeter than table sugar. And in the case of Advitane, it's 20,000 times sweeter than sugar. I'll leave a list here in the uh, insert which tells you what the different types of sugars and artificial sweeteners are, and you can compare them. The one interesting point which we've talked about before is that in one teaspoon of sugar, you have about four grams of calories. And in particular, for every gram of, of sugar, you've got four kcals of energy. And so in a normal soda, you have about 13 teaspoons of sugar. Now you can imagine that's about 160 calories unanswered food. And if you add that up and you're having a number of these a day, it can lead to significant help. And hence, a lot of people have gone to diet sodas, which have virtually no calories whatsoever, and still enjoy the taste which you would get with uh, sugars. So in the 70s, there were some studies which linked saccharin as well as uh, a few other uh, sweeteners like cyclamate um, to cancer in rats. But in those studies, they often used 100 times the daily dose of what a human would normally see. And they could never be corroborated in humans, to be honest with you. And so while they did show a risk of cancer in the case of saccharin and uh, cyclonate, and cyclonate was eventually banned, in none of the others that they ever shown had been humans to have any increased risk of cancer. So I would say that myth is that bond. Is there a connection between artificial sweeteners and weight gain? Artificial sweeteners and weight gain is that something that's very interesting. There is evidence to suggest that if you use artificial sweeteners, you reduce the number of calories that someone takes, 
The evidence with sodas is very clear, but in some cases, people make up for those calories. And so if you go to a fast food chain and you order the biggest meal they have with a burger and the fries, and then add a Diet Coke or a Diet Soda to that, it's not gonna make any iota of difference. So I think it has to be part of a larger strategy to reduce the number of calories that you have. And you need to be cognizant of what you're doing. But clearly eliminating sugar and going to artificial sweeteners will benefit weight gain, or rather reduce weight gain. And uh, in doing that has been shown to be beneficial for your diet. I think the ultimate course should be for weight gain to eliminate all sweetened or exogenously sweetened with sugar uh, items and just go to naturally sweetened things like fruits and whatnot. Your sugar causes tooth decay. Is the same true for artificial sweeteners? So there's two points here. The first is the bacteria in your mouth break down that sugar. And it's the acids that are formed which lead to decay uh, in your uh, teeth. Now, the truth is, even if you don't have sugar and you're snacking between meals and not squish brushing or brushing, you do have particles with carbohydrates in them and those can be broken down uh, by those bacteria. So while it will not eliminate tooth decay completely, it is true that if you do unsweetened or artificially sweetened products, that the level of tooth decay goes down dramatically. Uh, do artificial sweeteners pose a risk to your gut health? So there are some studies that suggest that perhaps high carbohydrate and high sugar substrates lead to some bacterial overgrowth. But again, the jury is out. It isn't substantive data suggesting that if you eat one way or the other, um, you're gonna come harm. Now, what is true is that if you're on very high carbohydrate diets with high sugars, that you will get metabolic syndrome and or heart disease, diabetes, and other things. So microbiome is one issue, but the bigger issue is your overall health will be affected. And in the case of artificial sweeteners, it really depends ultimately on how many calories you're kicking in. While they'll reduce the sugar lower, they won't reduce the ultimate macros of the meal you're eating. And so you have to be cognizant of what you're eating with protein and carbohydrate and balanced diets. So in conclusion, we've tried to present a balanced review of artificial sweeteners. There's no real good data in humans that they cause cancer, number one. Number two, they can be used in a diet free of sugar, and in particular for diabetics and other people with metabolic syndrome, it might be beneficial in reducing your overall glucose uh, and thereby your insulin requirements and whatnot. Uh, number three, the, in certain situations like lactated moms and kids less than two, it's not recommended, recommended to give artificial sweeteners, but the data is still out on whether or not it's harmful. And number four, does it help you to manage your overall sugar situation? Yes and no. My view would be that long-term, if we can get off of any type of sweetener, added exogenously and just stick to the natural uh, sugars and the natural sweetness of the food, we will enjoy the food for what it is and thereby come to a better conclusion. And so I hope this has helped you. And as always, we want you to see these videos and ask more questions. So leave the comments below as to whether you agree or not. Lastly, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with all your friends and hit the bell icon so you'll see new episodes for the same. We'll leave a lot of data in the soups as well, which compares the two. And then we give in all the evidence so you can read more. Let me know if you agree or disagree and what your stance is on this, because I would love to have a discussion with you on this. Anyway, thanks for joining us. I will look forward to seeing you in the next.